back then to my next video and uh, this video is going to be a little bit different it's not just going to be me it's going to be a good four five six of the Witchwood Carp team so I've been very very kindly being invited down to the Boathouse Fisheries in Shropshire now we have four days three nights ahead of us so it's just after 11 a.m. on the Monday We've been for a look around the lake with uh, one of the uh, one of the bailiffs, pointed out a few spots. And do you join me just in my swim? I'm just taking a minute to uh, yeah, just to get myself together. I've had to sort of barrow round to the furthest swim on the lake. I brought a ton of stuff with me because it's somewhere that I haven't visited before. I've got four days sort of in a swim. And uh, yeah, I didn't really want to sort of miss a trick if the opportunity arose. So my barrow is uh, absolutely packed to the rafters. It weighed a bloody ton. I had to fight with it to get it over the bridge. And uh, yeah, I am literally just taking a minute to get my breath back and just look at that stunning sort of lake out in front of me and uh, any potential sort of areas that I can flick my rods out. So first things first then, I am in a swim called The Steps. Now I've done as much research as I possibly can. I've watched I think every YouTube video going and uh, punished the uh, yeah punished the walk around for any sort of information as uh, yeah as well. So what I'm going to do first things first is just get me sort of spod rod out, get it deeper on there, give it a sort of thick flick out there, 40, 50 yards, see what I've got to play with. There's a real obvious tree line on the uh, on the far bank, which yeah, you know, screams obvious or at least a starting an obvious starting point. And uh, yeah, we'll have to just take it from there. It's uh, yeah, it is quite weedy, I believe. So uh, yeah, I do like fishing, you know, little holes in the weed or you know, clear areas amongst weed beds, that sort of thing. So. Like I say, I'm going to get the deeper on, on the rod, give it a flick out there, see what I've got to play with, and then, uh, yeah, we can think about whether it's going to be sort of pop-ups or solid bags, that sort of thing. But once I've sort of established uh, an area that I can fish, either sort of one or two, one or two rods on, then I can think about my tactics sort of going forward. So next time I catch up with you will probably be once I've made my decision. It is sort of late morning already, so, uh, yeah, I don't, know, don't want to spend too much time in front of this camera on the first morning. I'd rather uh, yeah, understand what's going on out there, get all that sorted first, and then we can sit down a little bit later on and uh, I can tell you what I'm going to be doing going forward. then all three rods out one very close in as you can see with the bushwhacker I mounted the chirp plus two on it as well to find that spot that I'd located earlier tipped slip the rig up with uh, creamino wafter attached to it some of the house pellet and then some crumb down freezer bait creamino raw marine because it's freezer bait only at this venue they went and crumbed down nice and soft as you would expect from a freezer bait so that has gone out and I'm probably happy to leave that rod to be quite honest with you uh, going it into the night because uh, yeah I found a spot I know the rig will be fishing perfectly and it's got a spoon of bait over the top of it as well so I'm quite happy to leave that one these two on the other hand went out on solid bags earlier around sort of I don't know 11 12 o'clock ish so they will need to be redone at some point as you can expect uh, you know the day has been quite full on um, you know getting around the lake getting set up etc etc um, yeah it's a bit of a mission and uh, yeah I, I brought quite a bit of gear with me obviously with it being a, uh, a four day session so a little bit of a longer setup but those two well all three of them to be honest are fishing absolutely bang on just looking around the lake there's no sort of you know you can't hear any leads or anything like that going out so I think everybody else is fishing as well now so just going to see how the first night progresses really I probably will put three or four spawns out over that clean spot 
because uh, just to give you know the solid bag something else to sort of fish with bait wise through the hours of darkness but like I say I will, uh, I will freshen them up but yeah it's looking banging out there it's uh, gone overcast the sun's disappeared the wind is pumping into my face and uh, yeah it feels good for a bite stick a little bit of bait out as you will see here I've got a two kilo little sack of uh, house pellet now this is available to buy um, there are some sort of bait restrictions on the venue that you must sort of adhere to if you are fishing the boathouse so I've got a, uh, a little sort of two kilo bag of the four and a half uh, mil uh, house pellet so we'll introduce that into the mix I'm not going to go mental three or four spawns max just going to feel my way into the sort of night really and see what happens through the hours of darkness and obviously the morning and then in my tactical HD bait caddy I have got a couple of kilos of boilies in here now it's been air drying out the bottom half of my bag has a uh, really nice feature you would have seen it from my up close review it's got an air dry mesh section you unzip it fully around the bottom hang it in a tree your freezer baits will air out nicely so they're nicely aired out <clears throat> and like I say I've got a couple of kilos in there I've got uh, Creamino and Royal Marine freezer baits so that is another rule you must follow all boily must be freezer bait so whether you're bringing your own or buying it from the guys at the boathouse it will have to be freezer baits only and no shelf life so as i say a couple of different uh yeah a couple of different boilies in there creamino and royal marine soft as you like literally squeeze down in your fingers with absolutely zero pressure at all so i'm going to give them a little bit of a crumbing down into the spawn you know dozen <clears throat> dozen baits per spawn nothing massive just more to get a little bit of scent and stuff going through on the spot banging two solid bags over the top sit back and really just see how the evening sort of like I say the evening and the morning pans out and then i can just reassess in the morning so i'm going to get these uh yeah get these spawns sorted get some food on the go and uh yeah see how the next few hours of daylight progress absolutely gutted it's just gone 1am I've had an absolute reamer on the uh, the short spot so the the margin spot that was strategically placed with the uh, with the deeper and the bait and spoon so the real short spot I've scrambled out got to the rod and it's still going still going and then it hits a bit of weed and then it's still going and then I've just been cut off absolutely gutted mate absolutely gutted you are never gonna believe this just after two o'clock it's led there on the bed chair screwing about obviously getting cut off from that first fish got my life together sat on the bed chair re-rigged the rod up got everything sorted i'd uh literally just bait and spooned it out got the deeper chirp back on there found the spot twisted the uh, pole over dropped the bait I reckon I shipped about five sections back and the rod, the spool started spinning on the rod. Could not believe it, I thought brilliant. Got one, uh, got the uh, the spoon still attached to the line, absolutely brilliant, just what I need in the dark. But no, spoon was absolutely nowhere near it. And uh, yeah, I've been playing a carp for about the last uh, half an hour, but it's weeded me up, if it's still on that is, um, about 20 yards out in front of me. I've had absolutely no idea if it's still on. The rod is uh, just sort of led on the lake, but uh, led on the deck down there with a spool loose. I'm trying to sort of like edge it back, but there's no give on it at the moment. So uh, I'm just going to play the patience game for the next sort of uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes. See if it manages to swim itself out. That again, like I said, even if it is still attached, but literally I tipped that rod up and it went within, I don't know, went within a minute. It was absolutely mental, mate. So, I, like I say, I don't even know if the fish is still on. But, uh, 
yeah, you could not write it in the last couple of hours. I'm just hoping that there's a fish still attached and I can get it in, but it's one of them 50 50. I'm gonna have to wait and see. There we go, and that's the prize persevering through the night after a uh, torrential thunderstorm and downpour and lightning. Yeah, pretty much had it all thrown at me last night, but uh, it's all come good, thank God. Proper nice little, uh, proper nice little fish, nice and dark along its back. Proper little fatty as well, look at him. But uh, yeah, really, really clean, immaculate fish, just what you kind of expect from this, uh, from this venue. So I'm gonna reel off a couple of quick snaps, slipping back, get the two solid bags swapped out for uh, slip D's, change of spots, and uh, yeah, we'll see if we can make something else happen with the other two rods. Right, so I come round to uh, use the facilities, and uh, yeah, Daryl has landed this absolute cracker. How'd you get this one, mate? Where's, where's this from? Uh, out in open water, just a little shallow plateau, a little bottom bait snowman rig. Bang him. Uh, nice, uh, clear spot in amongst the weed. Yeah, it's definitely, is it, was it weedy in front of you, mate, or was it yeah, not yeah, too bad? Or Not too bad, but there is some um, clear spots, just takes a little bit of lead in to find them. Yeah, yeah. Nice, yeah, that is an absolute mineral. I actually love them scales down on the uh, wrist of its tail, mate. We'll uh, get a few snaps, slip him back, get back round and get my rods out before this rain moves back in. Sounds good, sounds good. So I've just got the third and final rod to get out now. I've converted all three rods to lead clip systems and I'm also going to be using a slip D rig on all three as well. So I thought I'd just quickly show you before I uh, ship it out on the baiting pole. So I'm using a leadless leader, nice and supple, down to a lead clip system, as I said. Very neat, sort of very just gently and neatly tucked on the end there. That will allow that to pop off and the lead to discharge as and when the fish picks it up and shakes his head. Don't want any sort of lead getting in and around the weed that's out in front of me and there's quite a bit of it. So if I can get rid of this, it's definitely one less thing that's gonna hinder me from getting the fish in. So that's happened on the uh, first three takes. So I'm 100% confident that that's gonna come off and leave me just sort of in direct contact with the fish rather than this getting caught up in any of that weed in front of me. So really simple lead clip set up there, three ounce flat pair. Underneath the lead clip is a quick change swivel, just a very small mini anti-tangle sleeve, just allows me to chop and change rigs if I feel the need to, but uh, yeah, massively confident that the slip D's on these clear areas that I'm finding are going to be working for me, so don't need to do anything different yet, but you never know, there's a good sort of two and a half days of the session left yet, so if I may need to uh, chop and change things, I can do so very easily. And I've got sort of like a seven inch, six, seven inch, uh, coated braid which will allow me when the bait and spoon is tipping it up and the rig is dropping through the water obviously that'll go down first and then the rig once the PVA uh, nugget that I attach to the rig will just slowly then push the rig away so it's just laying out nice and flush on the lake bed down the end as I said it's tied slip D style little micro ring swivel on the back of the shank of the hook Bit of a uh, shrink tube sort of kicker there, just to give it a bit more turning pro turning properties. Stripped bit of coating on the uh, braid where it sort of exits the eye of the hook, and then a little bit of putty just to help push it and pin it all down. Now that hook will lay flat on the lake bed, and then a trimmed down wafter will just flutter above it, waiting to be hoovered up by Mr. Carp. Now what I've done. So I've been using the uh, creamy you know, sort of cork dust wafters and that's the one that got me the three bites last night. So I've put two out on those and I thought just while I'm using uh, creamy you know, and royal marine in my sort of boily choice I'll uh, stick one of these on as well, you know, you never know. If it is creamy, creamy you know, that gets me the bites tonight then I'll probably just go all out creamy you know, wafters just to keep it, you know, just to try and keep the bites coming really but whilst I've got these two boilies in the mix in my sort of uh, off you know free offerings I'd be silly not to give either of them a go but that's what's got me my first three bites as I said just to finish off the rig I'm just getting a piece of PVA foam like so just one single uh, nugget of foam getting my scissors 
which I cannot find, but basically essentially just cutting it in half like so, licking one side, trapping the hair in place like that, licking the other side, just basically gently squeezing it together, not really really tight, I don't want it stuck to the hook, but just want it to basically mask it on the descent. So as I said, the lead will drop through the water column, hit the lake bed, so that'll be lead like that. That'll just be popped up while the foam melts. Once the foam melts, that'll just flutter down nicely. That'll have your rig in place. And then the wafter waiting there just to be uh, amongst the mix from the spoon that I've tipped up over the top of it. So that is how I'm fishing. That's what's done me in my first three bites. As I say, this is the third and final rod. I found a banging, uh, really close in, clean spot. So let's get it out there and hope the magic happens. As you would have seen, nice little quick catch up social whilst we're waiting for sort of one or two others to arrive. So that's everybody here now. And uh, yeah, you never believe it, double take whilst we were uh, whilst we were stood there. So yeah, well cool to uh, have that on the bank with uh, pretty much everybody around. But uh, I am back in my swim now. Couldn't wait any longer. Start to see fish show, which we haven't seen pretty much all day and uh, I am itching to get those rods back out and uh, get my revenge on those two losses from last night. The wind's picked up, the sun actually did come out for a brief period and it was actually quite a pleasant evening. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get the rods sorted now, get them back out on the spots and see what the evening and the night has in store. How about that? I do, first of the account. Nice little move, eh, mate? It paid off. Definitely, mate. Thank you very much, Martin. It's been an enjoyable social so far. Hopefully, uh, first fish of many. Yeah, and hopefully, Louis uh, gets some grub delivered as well, mate. Yeah, eh? that'd be nice. Just to it? top it off. <laughs> All right. Well, she's got the ump. She's got the. Ump. Let's get her back. <laughs> yeah, look at this one. Right, bruiser. So yeah, this was off the new spot that I found close in. So uh, on a similar sort of, sort of line where I had that rod, uh, my right hand rod yesterday, similar sort of distance out, really, really clean area amongst, uh, amongst the various little patches of weed and uh, it's gone busting off. So well worth taking the time to find that other spot yesterday. It's, uh, yeah, it's paid off with this one. It's been a really quiet night so far. So yeah, hopefully, as dawn begins to break, there are a few more of these uh, lurking around. So yeah, well happy with that. Well, good morning then. So uh, Wednesday morning, just a one bite for me. Uh, I say last night, it wasn't really last night. It was kind of uh, just before first light. So around, uh, <clears throat> around half past four. 20 pounds and ounces as you would have seen on the uh, on the clip before nothing else as has happened since then so got a brew in hand I managed to get some uh, yeah decent sleep last night I went to went to bed quite early to be honest with you um, it was much needed just had the uh, text come through to say that the uh, the breakfast is on the go 
so I think I'm uh, going to give it sort of another half an hour here see if anything happens um, and then probably have the rods in go and use the facilities got a lovely hot shower on site that uh, yeah I uh, had a sort of road test of yesterday and uh, that was banging so I'm definitely going to be taking my towel again have a freshen up get sorted for the day and uh, then yeah I'm ready for the day ahead coffee in hand I'm gonna get that down my neck get these rods in get myself some breakfast and uh, yeah I can go about getting these rods back sorted when I get back into the swim and see if we can make a day bite happen round to my swim as you would have saw we've had the biggest piece of meat on the barbecue I have ever seen and we could pretty much just manage one so it looks like we've got yeah we've got sort of steak baguettes for the morning breakfast but uh, yeah proper done in on the food side um, the day's been really unproductive we've uh, yeah I've not had any bites a bit like yesterday really <clears throat> so uh, yeah, I'm hoping that the fish turn up again. They started to show just down to my right hand side. So I'm hoping they turn up again through the uh, hours of darkness. Just heading back round to the swim, trying to walk off that meat. And uh, yeah, gonna go get the rods out. It's turned into an absolutely beautiful, beautiful evening. We had thunderstorms earlier. That's passed and that's cleared. Now we've got beautiful blue skies and I've got the meat sweats put a hoodie and a jumper on because it actually turned a little bit nippy earlier but yeah now I am sweating out so let's get back to the swim get the rods out final night let's see if we can stick one or two more fish on the mat before I uh, yeah, decide what time I want to call it a day tomorrow to finish the adventure this you time. You know mate. that. Do you want it? What a morning. What yeah. a morning. Two thirties, couple of scaly bangers. What a way to round up an epic four days. Yeah mate. Great company. Buzzing. Great social. Some absolute bangers on the bank mate. Look at that. <laughs> So what a way to finish the social for the group as a collective you know it's all come good on the final morning you know you couldn't have uh, yeah you couldn't have written it any better really be waiting for us uh, sort or of one of the one of the big girls to turn up and yeah on the final morning uh, what's the chances you know two of them turn up and really make it a nice special way to end these uh, yeah end these last four days there's still plenty of time for uh, for one of my three to hopefully go rattling off. Um, you know, I'm not going to pack down and you know too quickly. I'm going to try and milk it. I can spend as much time uh, here today as I really want to, so I don't feel like I have to go if you know it looks like something's happening. But the previous sort of two days 
there's been it's been devoid of any sort of bites or action really so I'm in a bit of two minds what to do because it has been so slow but whilst I'm packing down obviously they're going to remain out so you may see my face again you may not so what I'll do is I'll wrap it up here but obviously if anything else anything else ha happens before we disappear I will get that camera straight back out so thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed this video I've tried to do it in a little, little bit of a different way where you can see some of the sort of behind the scenes stuff you know filming and filming just a few different angles really that I don't necessarily get to do myself obviously being you know a so low sort of vlogger etc so it's nice to have the guys also getting a load of content and video and stuff like that so i hope you've enjoyed the video as always you know like subscribe i've smashed the 5,000 now so you know let's go to six seven and get myself up to 10,000 subs leave a comment below if there's anything you want to know about the uh, the fishery i'll do my very best to help point you in the right direction but yeah which would social 2022 it's been enjoyable long overdue and uh, yeah, it's a venue that I will definitely be coming back to sometime in the near future. So that's a wrap. Hopefully I'll get to flick the camera back on before I leave. But yeah, I will catch up with you very, very soon next time I am out on the bank.